In the last section, we had a long discussion talking about how we're going to uniquely tag each of our images. Then the first thing we need to do is add some code to our Travis.yaml file that's going to determine the current Git SHA for our repository and ex export it as a environment variable so that we can later on use it inside of our deploy file. I'm going to flip over to my Travis.yaml file. And up at the top, right after our services section, I'm going to add on a new section called ENV. And then inside there, I'm going to specify global. And inside of here, we're going to set up some number of environment variables. So the environment variable that you and I care about is getting the current commit SHA. And I want to store that as an environment variable called simply SHA so that we can easily refer back to it in the future inside of our deploy.sh file without having to run that git rev parse command again and again and again. So inside of here, I'll say git SHA. Actually, well, let's keep it simple. We'll just do SHA. So that's going to be dollar sign parentheses git rev parse head. So this right here is going to determine the current commit SHA and assign it to a environment variable inside of our Travis environment alone called SHA. So we can now freely access this environment variable inside the deploy.sh file. Now, while we're inside of this environment variable configuration block right here, there is actually one other environment variable that we need to specify. This is totally unrelated to all the SHA stuff. I just wanted to make sure we took care of both these environment variables at the same time. So the second environment variable that we're going to put together is cloud SDK underscore core disable prompts equals one, like so. So cloud SDK, this entire thing right here, is just going to configure the Google Cloud CLI and make sure that it does not try to display any prompts that require user input. So in other words, when you and I run this command, gcloud auth activate service account, if this thing normally presents some warning or something that says like, are you sure you want to do this? Press Y or N. We don't want to see that because you and I don't have the ability to respond to that in a Travis environment. And so this right here is just going to make sure that the Google Cloud CLI does not try to show us any prompts such as that. Now, this is kind of a tricky command to, to write out here. So please make sure that you spell everything in this correctly and that everything is capitalized inside there. All right. So again, I apologize for that kind of little sidetrack. But again, I just wanted to do all these environment variables at the same time. All right, so we're going to flip back over to our deploy.sh file, and we're going to start to make some changes to this thing now to make sure that we apply not only a latest tag to all of our built images, but the git SHA as well. All right, so I'm going to first start with the client. Now here's the dash T, my Docker ID multi-client. I'm going to append to that latest, like so. So this is just going to be 100% clear that we want to tag this image as the latest version. After that, I'm then going to add on a second tag. So this is where this file is going to get a little bit squirrely, and there's going to be a lot of text moving around here. So we're going to say dash T, so a second tag, your Docker ID, slash multi-client, colon, and then dollar sign SHA, like so. So now in total, Docker build, tag one with the latest, Tag two with our SHA that we had defined as an environment variable inside the Travis.yaml file. And then after the second tag, we should still see the dash F for the Docker file and the build context on the end. Okay, so we're going to repeat that process twice again. So on multi server, I'll add on colon latest, and then we'll do another dash T multi server SHA. So again, double check this line. We've got tag one with latest and then tag two with the SHA. So then finally, we'll do latest on the multi-worker, multi-worker SHA. All right, so tag one and tag two. Again, do make sure that we have client server worker. So make sure you did not accidentally put like server in there or anything like that. We have client server worker, client server worker, client server worker, client server worker, all the way down. Okay, so that's looking good. Now the next thing we need to do is make sure that we push these new tags off to Docker Hub as well. So unfortunately, when you do this Docker push right here, we are pushing very specific tags as opposed to an image and all the tags that it has. 
So we have to run Docker push, not only for multi-client latest, but also for multi-client SHA as well. So for each of these different tags we have, we're going to have two separate push commands. So I'm gonna look at all the current pushes we have right here. And I'm gonna put on latest to each of them just to be 100% explicit. And then I'll do another set of push commands. Now for this one, I am just gonna do a copy paste, no harm in this case. So there's my copy paste for client server worker. And then I'll update each of these to be SHA, SHA, and SHA, like so. So now the last thing we have to do is make sure that we get a separate set image command for each of our different deployments. And we need to make sure that we specify multi-server with our get SHA on the end as well. And so for the first set image right here, I'm gonna to go to the very end of the line. Here's multi-server and I'll append on colon SHA like so. And then we're going to repeat this command twice again for the multi client and the multi worker as well. So I'll do kubectl set image deployments, client deployment. Client is going to be my Docker ID. Multi client, and I'll put the SHA in. And then finally, we'll do the same thing as well for kubectl set image deployments worker deployment, and the worker image, or excuse me, the worker container inside that deployment needs to use the image, my Docker ID, multi-worker, colon, SHA. Okay, so that's it. That's all we have to do. Now that's the entire deployment script here. Now, again, I gotta ask you, please do one last quick triple check inside of here. Make sure you've got client server worker, client server worker, server client worker, Server client worker, server client worker, all the way across. No one of these lines should have like duplicated client client in a row like so. They're all completely separate images that we're working with here. Okay, so that's pretty much it for our deploy.sh file. And I think that's pretty much it for our Travis.yaml file as well. So we're just about ready to push this thing off to GitHub and test out our deployment. But before we do, there's one or two last quick things we have to take care of inside of our Kubernetes cluster on Google Cloud. So let's take a quick pause right here, come back to the next section, and one last little piece of setup we have to get to. So I'll see you in just a minute.